Hi everyone, I thought that I would vlog today. I am all by my little lonesome. Marco is skiing this weekend, but my sister is amazing and she came and slept over Friday night and then yesterday we spent the whole day in Williamsburg and went to a few different thrift stores and I thought that I would share what I picked up. I went a little bit crazy. I was mostly going for home decor things and decorative things. Um, but I did treat myself to a few other things as well. First, I'm really excited about this one. I got a glass bowl that looks like a flower and I thought that I would put this on like our bedside table and put jewelry in it and, jewelry in it and other things. Um, we're actually getting rid of our bedside table that we have because we're gonna put a, tr a dresser there instead just because we thought we could do it of not having a dresser. And it's possible, but we're just not organized enough and the closets are really chaotic and I feel like we can't actually see anything in the closets. So we're getting a dresser and this will be put on it, but I think it's so beautiful. It looks like a little flower um, and I love it. So that is really the only home thing that I got because we went to a few different stores and my sister and I were planning on getting a lot more for the apartment, but... We were spending the whole day there and we couldn't carry everything around. My sister actually got a few different vases, even though we were going there for myself. <laughs> she treated herself and she is a bad influence in that regard. But then, um, we were waiting for a thrift store to open up because they don't open till noon. And while we were waiting, I happened to go into this bookstore and I got two books, guys. This is what we're here for. Um, I went to the McNally Jackson bookstore. The first book I got, um, Lesser Known Monsters of the 21st Century, a collection of stor short stories by Kim Fu. I am so excited about this. First of all, it's a stunning cover. So it's 12 unforgettable tales. The strange is made familiar and the familiar strange, such that a girl growing wings in her legs feels like an ordinary rite of passage, while a bug-infested house becomes an impossible Kafka-esque nightmare. Each story builds a new world all of its own. A group of children steal away a haunted doll. A runaway bride encounters a sea monster. A vendor sells toy boxes that seemingly control the passage of time. An insomniac is seduced by the Sandman. These visions of modern life wrestle with themes of death, technolo technological consequence, guilt and sexuality, and unmask the contradictions that exist within all of us. So I'm so excited about this one. And one of the people who work at the bookstore said that they just read this and loved it. So feeling good about this one. And then I was really intrigued by the cover of this. So simple and beautiful. It's called The Delivery and it's kind of spelled out in the cover art. So I will read you the blurb of this one as well. I think it's one of the most beautiful covers. Um, in the bustling indifference of an unnamed city, a company dispatches an army of, of undocumented refugees to bring meals to the wealthy. The delivery boy is one of their newest hires, a member of a large and invisible working class pedaling through traffic in search of a decent tip and a five-star rating. Can our hero avoid the wrath of the supervisor, get the girl and escape and escape indentured servitude? Can someone in his predicament find a happy ending? And who is telling their story anyway? So this sounds incredible. I am so excited to read it. I think it will be my next read. Um, I'm in the middle of two really long books right now. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. But when I'm done with those, the delivery is first up. Then, um, something I got that I'm not going to try on because it's snowing in New York today. Even though yesterday I wasn't even wearing a real jacket. It was like 58 degrees. It was a beautiful day. I really felt like the spring energy. And then today I woke up and it's snowing. It's still beautiful, but not what I was hoping for. Um, but I got this little, we can't even see it. It's Please ignore my slippers if you happen to see them. It's a little denim romper because I was feeling the spring summer vibes. And I don't really have that many summer clothes just because I usually just wore like athletic shorts and a t-shirt, but I'm trying to be a grown up. Um, then I got, I mentioned that we were going away over the summer and I thought that this little green beret is perfect for that trip and also general life. You may know this is my favorite color and I'm loving it. I don't think it will really work today because I'm trying to let my hair 
dry naturally, not use so much heat on it. My hair is naturally curly or at least a very wavy. I used to have like ringlets as a little kid, but I destroyed my hair with straightening it. I think a lot of us did that in like middle school and high school and I'm trying to get my curls back, but I don't have a lot of curly hair products. So I just let it night dry naturally, but then I don't have control over, over when I have a good hair day or a bad hair day. It just, it just happens. Um, so I'm trying to let her be natural, but guys, the one I'm most excited about that was really treating myself and I was there with my sister. And like I said, she treated or she said that I should indulge and I got cowboy boots. They were still like secondhand, of course, vintage and marked down, but they were still a little bit of a treat. And I just thought that I deserved them. So I got these. I think they're so fucking sexy. I'm so excited to wear them with sundresses, jeans, sh shorts. I will try them on later, but I am obsessed. Um, so those were my little treat day purchases yesterday. Hello everyone, sorry for that abrupt ending. I actually ran out to brunch with Marco's coworker actually because we are reading um, The Heart's Invisible The Heart's Invisible Furies together by John Boyne. Um, we're both just past like over the halfway point, so we're in part two, and we thought we would meet up and talk through our initial thoughts. Um, so this is quite a big book. It's like 600 plus pages and it's a little bit corny, a little bit cheesy, a little bit convenient, but also a really sweet story. So we are following a boy into his young adulthood so far. I don't know how far we'll follow him, but a man named Cyril, C Cyril, and, um, he was an orphan as a child and he was adopted by this couple who showed him next to no love. It was really like that was my peer versus that was my child and he grew up really isolated and alone and struggling with his sexuality. He knew very early on that he was gay, specifically after meeting this young boy at the time named Julian who became his very best friend, but all the while Cyril, Cyril, I don't know if I'm saying his name correctly, um, has been in love with him for their entire lives. They went to school together and now they're both young men and um, He's kind of grappling with his sexuality, specifically in the backdrop of Ireland in the 60s at the time, um, where it's really claustrophobic, really homophobic, really toxic and terrifying. Um, and now that we've reached part two, he's left Ireland, um, but is also, he's kind of severed, severed ties with the people in his past, his family, his friends, but I think we will return there eventually. So like I said, it's a little bit, well, first of all, this cover is truly unacceptable um but i am enjoying it i think our main character cyril he's really lovable you really feel for him he doesn't always make the best decisions um and i think john boyne is exploring exploring irish culture in a really interesting way um i feel like he he's using different historical elements in a way that feels a little bit too convenient um so I'm not loving that, but I am just really enjoying the story. I'm definitely interested and it's keeping my attention for a 600 page book. I think that's, you know, just impressive in its own right. So I'm enjoying this and I will let you know um, my final thoughts. Um, but the other book, so I'm right in the middle of two very big books. So this one and then I'm listening to or still listening to, um, what's it called? The Name of the Wind. And it might very well be my first DNF ever. I've never DNF'd a book before. I've always pushed through, but I'm really, really not enjoying it. And I don't want this to be like 112263 where I got stuck into like a 30 plus hour audiobook that I just was not enjoying at all. So I think I'm going to have to give it up. I know it's much loved. So it's the first book in a fantasy series, and we are following a man named Quoth or Kowoth. And he's been found by a man named Chronicler because Quoth has been masquerading as like an innkeeper or a barman. But really he is a infamous wizard or sorcerer or something of the sort with a lot of stories to tell. And Chronicler finds him, realizes who he is and says, I want to tell your story. So they sit down together and start 
reminiscing, th reminiscing, reminiscing through Quoth's life and childhood. And right now we're focusing on um, when he was a young boy with his parents, when he was being mentored by this other person who had a lot of special abilities. And I'm just quite bored by it. I think, you know, obviously it's a fictional person. It's a wizard. He has a lot of stories to share, but I am finding him a little bit like self-indulgent. <laughs> Not telling my story, nobody shall hear from me, and then I need three days to tell you every single thing that ever happened to me with back-breaking detail. Um, and I'm just, I don't really find his story interesting, so I think I'm gonna give it up. And I feel less bad giving up on a book that I didn't spend money on. Like, it's an audiobook, so if I physically purchased it, then I probably probably would push through. But there's a lot of other audiobooks I want to listen to, and I'm just not loving it. Um, today's Super Bowl Sunday, so yay, hooray! <laughs> um, I just got back from brunch, like I said, and I am in this apartment literally all day, every day, because I work from home, and so on the weekends, I really don't want to, like, hang out here. I think I'm going to go out and just go to like a coffee shop and read for a few hours because I just, as much as I love our home, I need to not be here <laughs> all weekend when I'm here Monday through Friday, literally all day. So that's my plan now. It's finally stopped snowing a little bit. So I think that's the plan and I will check in with you later guys. I'm back in bed and don't have much to report other than the fact that you simply must watch The Great on Hulu. I'm like five and a half episodes in and I'm so obsessed with it. It's like right up my alley. It's historical fiction, romp about the rise of Catherine the Great, the Russian Empress, and it's so hilarious and satirical and rompy and also really smart. I'm just like loving it. The two, Al Fanning, and I'm not sure of the actor's name. Nicholas something are fantastic in their roles like I'm laughing out loud like by myself in my apartment based watching a historical fiction show I'm obsessed with it and that's all I have to tell you I don't think I'm gonna watch a Super Bowl I think I'm just gonna keep chugging along with this because actually I was reading this and now that I'm like well into part two it's like traumatic and a lot of things are coming out of nowhere. We're now focusing on um, the AIDS epidemic in New York City in, I believe it's the eight, like in 1987 is like one, the year we're in right now. And it's devastating and a, a lot of things are like coming out of left field. Um, so it's all of a sudden like a very traumatic read. And yeah, so I'm just taking a little bit of a break, but I'm enjoying it. I think it's like great storytelling but yeah I'm not sure how I feel about it so we will see but I don't want to text the person that I'm reading it with because I don't know if he got there yet and I don't want to spoil anything but I'm like did you get to page 393 you know I don't know all right I'm gonna watch more of this and talk to you later hello everyone happy valentine's day quite unfortunate that it falls on a Monday but I put in my hard stop at work for 545 and hopefully I don't need to log on again when I get home at night but Marco and I are attempting to go to a few places this evening one we're just gonna go with dinner but then my sister actually told me about a really cool place it's deep in Brooklyn though which might be an issue for us um, but it's this really cool place that on the second Monday of every month, they have authors who had a book released in that previous month come and um, read excerpts, excerpts from their books. So we're gonna try to do that after dinner. Marco agreed to go, so that's exciting. But yeah, we don't know if we'll make it just because it's so far from us, but if we don't, I could always go in March. Um, these are my flowers. We don't have a vase, which is partly uh, my fault because I obviously should obviously should have purchased one when we went to when my sister and I went to that thrift store over the weekend. So it's in um, our Nutribullet, which is still cute. <laughs> um, just no smoothies for the next few days, but yeah, they're quite beautiful. 
It is quite crazy. Mark and I have obviously, well obviously, if you don't know this, you don't know this. We've been together for very many years, um, but we've never had like a real go out Valentine's Day date just because, you know, we were in school. And then last year, obviously, we didn't go anywhere. Marco actually, and we lived at home with our parents. And, um, like, because of COVID, we didn't go out, obviously. We, Marco actually built a fort in his dad's basement. And we had, like, we ordered a bunch of, a bunch of sushi and wine and hung out in this fort like we were little kids. It was actually, actually quite wonderful. And I had a great time, but I'm excited to go out tonight. I know I said I wasn't going to, um do heat on my hair and I stand by that statement but it's a holiday and tomorrow I will have my curls again but for today I just did like a really easy straightener curl I don't actually own a curling iron because or a curling wand they're kind of expensive and I feel like I don't do it enough that I could just do like a little twisty thing in my straightener I've watched a few YouTube videos um, and I feel like it does the trick I need to actually go get dressed because Marco is going to be home and he's gonna wanna like run out the door and I'm not gonna be ready. Um, but I guess I hope, oof, I hope um, you all had a wonderful Valentine's Day doing what, oh my God, this is why we are getting a dresser. Don't judge me. Okay, everyone, I will talk to you later. Hi everyone, so I'm finishing up work for the day and we had a great time last night we were a little bit hungover i skipped all of my alarms this morning so i didn't go to the gym i was gonna go to the gym right now but marco's mom just dropped off the dresser and i would much rather organize the dresser and make it all look cute and start that little process of emptying out my shitstorm of a closet so I think I'm gonna do that instead and I'm really really excited I think we will end up just putting the current bedside table that we have out on the curb we didn't pay for it we found it on somebody else's curb so I don't feel too bad about that and it's nice quality it just obviously is missing a drawer Okay, so here we have it. I absolutely love it. So the story of this, because all of our furniture <laughs> is from other people, this was Marco's stepdad's mom's dresser that she brought to her, brought with her to college, which is so cute, and I love the color of it. Um, I'm just gonna clean it out and start organizing. All right, so we are all done with this. The only thing is that the nightstand was holding all my unread books so now they're under here which is actually a pretty good spot for them um we are planning one of the few things that we are still planning and needing to do um is order like a few maybe two or three floating shelves that we'll put in this little alcove um for decor but also books pictures anything like that um so this wall isn't such a big open expanse of nothing so that is the plan, but yeah, I love the dresser. I think it's so cute and I love the color. Definitely goes with um, our color palette that we were going for. So before I wrap this vlog up, I wanted to just chat through my final thoughts for the Hearts Invisible Furies. Um, I liked it. I think, like I said before, it was a little bit corny. A lot of things were convenient in terms of just different relationships, um, but if you put all that aside, I think like those are easy things to like jab at the book for that it was a little bit too convenient. But all that aside, I think it was a sweet story. I think it was a really um, deep portrayal of Ireland throughout the decades and we followed Cyril from his birth to his old manhood. And I think like I love that. I feel like we knew him so fully and so well. Um, we explored all different aspects of his life and his relationships with other people. And I think it did a really fabulous job of analyzing his experience as a gay man through all different avenues, all different places in the world, all different decades, all different relationships. So um, so I would recommend it 
it was a nice read and I was interested throughout. I didn't love the epilogue portion. Um, then it just like went too far with the cheesiness for me, but other than that, I was on board throughout. Um, I just had to go grab a coffee. I don't usually, I'm not a Starbucks gal, but I am still going through my um, holiday gift cards and we have no more coffee. And yesterday I didn't have any coffee at all, like not even a drop. And I usually have four to five black coffees a day. So I had like a throbbing headache this morning. And so I had to go remedy that issue. And that's all I have for you. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye everyone.